In this lesson, you're going to learn how to express contrast, contradiction, or to assess in terms of uh, contrarian uh, notions, contrarian ideas. It's especially useful for your argumentation, for example, if you're writing Providence uh, Tre or Studio Poion, but also just in an everyday speech, if you want to um, say that there is a kind of a paradox in what is going on. Like, although it's difficult to learn Danish, um, I'm still doing this because I have to, or I want to be fluent. So the contrast or contradiction uh, subclauses are introduced by conjunctions. Uh, the most uh, frequently used are selom, mens, uh, or uh, vo imul. These three. Very often learners confuse selom with alevil, but alevil is a free adverb. So you can start a main clause with the alevil and you can use it in the middle. Uh, but um, Selom is used only in the subordinate clause, and you don't have inversion after selom. You do have inversion after a label if it is standing at the beginning of the main clause. But the svært at lære dansk a label gør jeg det. I'm still doing that. But you say selom det er svært at lære dansk. Right? Selom det er uh, you have subject verb, so you have a classical uh, subclause scenario. Other conjunctions of admission are here in the list. They are not that frequently used. Maybe til trods for at or trods de at um, are quite frequently used. They mean despite the fact that or despite something. Mm. Selom is uh, the most uh, frequently used uh, conjunction to express the internal paradox. It's sort of like, it, it's surprising how it can be like this, but still it's like this. Selom mange danske virksomheder tilbyder stor fleksibilitet. Gå mange medarbejdere med med stress. Like it's, even though many Danish companies offer big flexibility at work, uh, many uh, employees uh, get down with stress, so they they are experiencing stress. So it's like it's logical to think that if you have freedom, store flexibility, flexibility, then you can uh, design whatever framework. But it's not like this. So it's a kind of an internal paradox, um, and you express this relation by saying "selom." This is the subclause, right? The subordinate clause. Selom mange danske virksomheder. Subject, verb. Selom mange danske virksomheder. If I want to insert a, a, an optional field, I put it here, for example, ofte tilbyder store flexibility. So the subclause ends here after flexibility. And then I make inversion in the upcoming main clause because the cell on part is an inversion trigger. Cell on, and then mange medarbejder. This is the subject group. If you want to say mange medarbejder går ned med stress, main clause first, you don't make inversion there. Right? And the subclause remains the same. It is frozen. Til trods for at det i dag er blevet mere populært at læse til ingeniører blandt kvinder, at der stadig flere mænd, der syger om optagelser på ingeniørfag. Despite the fact that it, is, uh, has, it has become more popular today to study um, at an engineer uh, program among women, there are still more men uh, who apply for um, engineering uh, programs. So, Til trods for at means despite the fact that. And then I have a subclause scenario, which is subject, optional field. Here it's an object. And then first verb, and then second verb. And the same story would happen if you change the places. You can start with, der er stadig flere mænd, der søger om optagelse på ingeniørfag. Til trods for at det i dag er blevet mere populært 
and then you continue the same. Um, is, instead of saying til trods for at, you can say trods the at. You can also say like this. So um, remember subclause scenario and inversion in the main clause after a subclause. Um, Vo imul is another conjunction. Når man dyrker sport, kan man få stor mentalt overskud og følge kan bedre håndtere stress. This is the main clause here. We have actually first the subclause, which stops here, right? Then you have inversion in this upcoming main sentence. Kan man få? Kan man få? Og kan håndtere? Then comes the second subclause, which refers to this one, Kamen, right? Uh, but it, it's inverted here. Usually, if you just had uh, one main clause here, it would not be inverted. This Kamen is inverted because of Norman Dürger's port. So it's like a chain reaction, right? So, hvor um, imod manglende emotion kan være årsag til nedsat humør og mindre udholdenhed. While um, missing exercise or not enough exercise can be the reason for bad mood and um, less staring power, like less energy. Hvor imod is while. If I want to use it first, I would say hvor imod manglende emotion kan være årsag til nedsat humør og mindre udholdenhed. Kan man få stor mentalt overskud og følge kan bedre håndtere stress, når man dyrker sport? So I would not have inversion here. Man can, because this main clause here, this main clause would follow uh, the clause of um, sorry, there would still be inversion, what I'm saying. Uh, no, I'm saying wrong. Uh, Hvor imod manglende emotion kan være årsag til nedsat humør og mindre udholdenhed, kan man få stort mentalt overskud. This time there will be inversion because you have hvor imod first. Right? And then you put this no clause. So actually no men dyrker sport and hvor imod, they would swap places. Mins is another Conjunction, which you can use for describing statistics, for example, or two different trends uh, you are analyzing. Der er flest stressede blandt de 25 34 årige, mens de mindst stressede er de ældre menneske. So you have in the contrast, like you express the difference of, um, between the <clears throat> two groups. And uh, you can also start with mins uh, subclause, but then remember inversion in the, in the up, uh, upcoming main clause. Yes. Uh, the next uh, conjunction here is when said well, regardless what or no matter what, when said that the force is in, no matter what is being researched in, da forskes, forskes here is the passive construction, da is the subject. Subject. Oh, sorry, conjunction, subject, then the verb, the subclause scenario, er, verb, alle forskningsresultater vigtige for udvikling af nye teknologi. I invert the main clause because, according to scenario two, because I have an inversion trigger here. If I rephrase, it would be, Alle forskningsresultater er vigtige for udvikling af nye teknologi, uanset hvad der forskes i. I don't make inversion in the main, and um, the subclause remains the same. Very often when you um, write or uh, present your arguments, assessing something, making an assessment, vurdering, call in Danish, 
you can say that on the on one side is like this, on the other side is like this. However, it's like this. Uh, or nevertheless, on the contrary, these are not conjunctions. These are free adverbs. And you can use them as well as uh, the initiating bricks. They will, for example, stand at the beginning of the phrase, right? Um, for example, here, jeg troede, du ville blive ked af at høre det. Du blev tværtimod glad. So tværtimod is a free adverb, and it also reflects contradiction or contrast to what I have expected. Um, I could say, selvom jeg troede, du blev ked af at høre det, blev du glad. But tværtimod is more precise, actually. Here it comes. Uh, so, jeg troede, it's the first main clause. At is uh, omitted here. We can insert it just to make sure that we understand. It's the sub subordinate clause. Jeg troede, I thought what? I believed what? At du vil blive ked af høre det. Here, I think min is omitted. Uh, so, it's, it's a main clause here. Subject verb and then free adverb at the place of uh, the optional field according to scenario one. Because it's a main clause, I can also put tvertimud at the first position, right? Just like tegengel var det billigt or put an en en side kan det være vanskeligt can be difficult. So I could write min svært imod blev du glad. But there is also a matter of usage. <clears throat> you can construct it like this, but people would probably say this variant. Men du blev svært imod glad. Uh, as an optional field uh, according to scenario one. Here it's an inversion trigger, right? Min, conjunction, and then you have an inversion trigger, tværtimod, blev du, inverted, according to scenario two. Gratis sundhedsvæsen sikrer mere lighed i samfundet, dog er det en årsag til lange ventelister til behandlinger. Vesen. It's a typo, sorry. Gratis uh, free uh, healthcare ensures more or guarantees more um, equality in the society. However, it is a reason for long waiting lists for the treatments. Do is a free adverb here. So it's an inversion trigger, right? In the main clause. So it's an inversion trigger, ET. Then I have verbum subject. If I used sell on as a subclause uh, conjunction, I could say exactly the same sentence in the way um, sell on gratis sundhedsvæsen sikrer mere lighed i samfundet. Subclause. Then I make inversion. Er det en årsag til lange venteliste? I don't need to because I have selom. So you can choose your uh, way to express contrast by using subclause conjunctions or free adverbs, but remember um, to place them correctly. <clears throat>